This is the second part of the two-part series of videos about studying and fasting. So, in the first video, um, I spoke about the benefits of fasting on your brain function and your memory and, and your cognition. And this video, I want to talk a little bit about how I'm going to structure my revision or my studying um, and my timetable, my daily timetable during Ramadan. I'm a medical student myself, I'm a third year medical student and I have exams coming up in July so this is why I'm making this video to show you guys how I fit my studying around Ramadan and and um, yeah basically that. Now to start this video I want to say that if you haven't watched the first part of the video you should probably watch that because it will give you uh, a bit of motivation for fasting and and you know carrying out your studies during Ramadan um, because I know for me sometimes it can be demotivating when I'm fasting all I want to do is sit in bed and just relax and not do anything um, but if you watch the first video you'll see the benefits of fasting on your brain function and it will remind you to study and, and whatnot and try and get the best results in your exams. So to start off with this video I want to talk a little bit about your sleeping pattern. Now the sleeping pattern is a topic in itself which is very important to discuss but just to briefly talk about it now um, basically there are quite a few different types of sleeping patterns now there's monophasic biphasic and polyphasic um, and then they go in there there are specific patterns inside that and specific sleeping styles inside each one so sub patterns now the general sleeping pattern in the uk is monophasic meaning you have one large sleep from say 12 o'clock till 8 o'clock and then you wake up get ready go to work 9 o'clock boom done then you come back next start again 12 o'clock 8 o'clock okay so one big chunk of an eight hour sleep and that's it it's the most common sleeping pattern in the uk and this kind of developed from the industrial revolution when people had to work long hours and they'd come back be tired, they'd go to sleep, they'd sleep for a very long period to make sure that they had enough energy to work the long hours the next day. Scientifically this isn't the best way to sleep however because society in the UK has has evolved so much around that specific sleep pattern uh, we kind of take it as as the norm and, and that's how society runs now with the monophasic sleeping pattern. In other parts of the world, of Europe, for example, Spain, Germany, um, in the Mediterranean, in Latin America, um, the sleeping pattern is different. So they have what you call a biphasic. Now, a biphasic sleeping pattern is one where you sleep twice in the day. Now, so this can involve you sleeping for about five or six hours at night. You then go to work, you come back, um, you might come back from work at 5 p.m. You have a nap for about half an hour to one and a half hours and there you're now energized for the rest of those hours so you can be productive during your evenings. Now the biphasic sleeping pattern is better for your memory and for your cognition because napping is found to improve memory and cognition in a lot of scientific studies. It also helps to reduce stress. So this biphasic sleeping pattern helps with uh, reducing stress through the napping process. And as I mentioned earlier, it increases your productivity because you're more energized during the evening. Whereas if you only slept the once, you come back from a big shift at work, five o'clock, you come, you're slumped, you're tired, sit in bed watching Netflix, and then you're ready for the next day. So that's why biphasic is, is a better and more productive way uh, or, or a sleeping pattern. To move on to the second part of the video, this is my revision structure. This is my Ramadan timetable. Let me start off by what time my day usually starts. Um, as I said, I'm in my third year of medical school, which means I'm based in hospitals and I'm doing placement year. Um, so this involves me having to wake up around 7.45 or 8 o'clock, get ready for half eight, and then get to work by nine. I have from nine till 12, uh, I'm at work, and then from 12 to one, I have a break. And then um, in this break, this one hour break from 12 to one, while everyone else will be having their lunch, um, I'll probably be having a nap to refresh myself, to energize myself, for the next couple of hours 
because you have then I'll have another four, three or four hours to go. So I'll probably have a half an hour, 45 minute nap maximum and feel refreshed. Start again at one o'clock. Now one o'clock till five o'clock roughly. Um, then I'm back in the hospital, uh, working, saving lives. Da da da. Um, then five o'clock, come back home, and say around half five, I'm gonna take a one and a half hour nap. Now this depends. The length of my nap at half five depends on whether or not I had a nap earlier that day. So if I had a nap earlier that day, then I'll only have a half an hour nap uh, at half five. So then six o'clock. Now I wake up six o'clock, 6.15 um, and 6.15 then I'll sit down and try and get some work done. Now this work includes flashcards and recapping the stuff that I learned the night before. Um, and because I'm, I'm not really spending too much time stud, um, working, it's only like a, a one hour, 15 minute working uh, window. So try and get a little bit of work done as in recap what I learned or questions and try and answer these questions. And then at half seven, it's then time to go to the gym or play football. So, um, it is Ramadan, but it's not going to stop me from carrying on with fitness. Um, I'd want to fit in at least a session in the gym or to at least play football. Um, there are quite a few lads on campus who uh, they fast and we still play football. We did, we've been doing this for a couple of years, um, so hopefully it's the same this year as well. Um, so yeah, so we'll play a game of football or go to the gym. And then that will lead me to 9 o'clock and nine o'clock roughly is when it's time to break your fast so nine o'clock i break my fast and i'll probably chill get over the postprandial slump i'll have a big belly full of food so i'm just gonna all i want to do is just sit relax let all that digest all them nutrients fill my body all them vitamins and then once i've relaxed half ten i go to the mosque to pray tarawi and um, that probably takes like an hour and then half 11 I'm back half 11 is then when I start my work so this is when I start studying now hopefully the food should have sort of made its way down and tried to digest as much of it as I possibly can I'm not going to try and eat too much uh, during uh, the time when I'm breaking my fast because that's going to then affect my studies uh, at that night um, because if I've eaten too much, then I won't be able to study. And um, so yeah, half 11 is when I start studying. Now I'm going to sit down, probably with a coffee, uh, maybe a week one, um, just so that I can get to sleep that night as well, and get on with my work. Now, half 11, half 12, half 1, up until half 2. Done my work, finished, that's it. And, you know... My house will be quiet, most of my flatmates are in bed by around 12 um, so that means that the house is quiet and I've, I've got a few quiet hours to get on with my work. Now once that is done, half two is when I'll probably start to prepare my porridge for the next day, um, take my vitamins, whatever I need for the next day, um, eat as much as I can, fill my stomach up as much as I can and then three o'clock bed and that gives me five hours to sleep and wake up at around eight o'clock the next day so in that sort of typical day I'm basically sleeping for about um, six and a half seven hours which is fine because it's spread out it doesn't it means that I don't have to sleep for the full eight hours I usually do because it's spread out I can sleep for a five hour short period, feel refreshed and then sleep for a one and a half hour period or half an hour period and then I feel refreshed again for the evening uh, shift. Um, and also this is like me living by myself uh, independently, not with my family. So obviously if my parents were around then I'd, I'd have food ready and I wouldn't have to take time to, to prepare that or etc, etc. Um, so yeah. I guess that is basically my timetable for Ramadan, my study timetable for Ramadan. Um, 
I hope this video was helpful and giving you an insight into, you know, how you can fit your studies around Ramadan and how you shouldn't let Ramadan impact on your studies. They can work, you know, they can both complement each other. Um, but yeah, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. If you want to see any other videos, make sure you leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a good Ramadan. I hope you make the most of it. I hope you enjoy it. Because uh, I'm actually excited for Ramadan this year. Um, it's one of my favourite times of the year. Every year. So, But yeah. I'll see you guys in the next video.